Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Horsepower Obsessed. Today, we get to talk a little bit more about the C8 Corvette reveal we saw last night and how amazing some of the information we got really was. All right, guys, so last night we got to see this car finally after two plus years of anticipation for this thing. We finally get to see it in the flesh. And while it looks amazing, it wasn't anything we haven't already seen. Chaz Cron nailed it with the renderings he did. The car literally looked exactly like the renderings we've seen from him countless times before. With that said, when that thing pulled out in the torch red color right on the main stage there, it is a fantastic looking car. And it's only gonna get better with the Z06 and the ZR1 performance variants coming later. As of right now, the Z06 and the ZR1 are just rumored specs, but at the same time, a lot of the rumored information for the Stingray came true, so odds are very good. Most of the information we have on the Z06 or ZR1 is probably pretty close to accurate as well. But for the Stingray model that we got last night, there is a massive amount of information to cover, and the car really takes the Corvette into supercar territory with some of these great new features. So number one, the biggest one everybody wanted to know about, horsepower. The base Stingray will have 490 horsepower, 465 pound-feet of torque. If you opt for the NPP performance exhaust, which most people probably will, that will bump those numbers up to 495 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. So very similar to the C7 Corvette, you gain about five horsepower and about five torque with the NPP exhaust, as well as the ability to control how loud or how quiet it is when you want. Now with this car, we're getting an eight speed dual clutch transmission that mounted with that 490 or 495 horsepower engine, we will actually get a sub three second zero to 60 time. This is mind blowing for a base model to be that fast zero to 60. Now, the big thing that really factors in here is that transmission. The 495 horsepower isn't massive power. Nowadays, we've seen plenty of cars coming out with seven, eight, 900 horsepower from the factory, but this car doesn't have to jam a giant engine in it to get those kind of numbers. The biggest benefit here is that dual clutch transmission because of how fast it can shift and because it's so well programmed to stay in that car's power band. It literally can take that 495 horsepower car to 60 miles an hour before you can count to three. Like I said, that's massive. That's a huge, huge milestone for this car to hit. And that really just tells me that the Z06 and the ZR1 models are going to be insane. Now, one of my favorite features whenever I first saw the leaked spec list for the C8 Corvette was, of course, the front end lift. The front end lift is something that's needed on any sports car that sits as low as the Corvette does, and I would absolutely love to have something like that on my C7 Corvette. But the C8 Corvette is getting that feature, and I knew it would. But when he came out on the stage and told us that not only is it getting that feature, but it's GPS programmable, my mind was blown. It literally asks you every time you raise the front end of that car if you want it to do it at that position every time. So me personally, I need something like that to get in my driveway. If I hit that button while pulling into my driveway and it asked me if I wanted to save it, I'd say yes. And every time I came near my driveway, it would automatically lift that car up for me. And that is an unbelievably awesome feature. The fact that that front end lift is able to lift the nose of that car up two inches is unbelievably useful as well. Now they also talked about some of the new digital architecture that the car will be using. And I've touched on this in previous videos. It basically means the brain, so to speak, of the car is able to react faster, is basically way more updated than it is in current cars. And while that by itself isn't a huge thing for most people, a lot of the actual navigation, the infotainment center, even the speedometer, these are all tied into that system. So faster reaction time for them is a huge, huge plus. The one thing I wasn't 100% sold on though is whenever he started talking about being able to reflash the car over the air. That worried me a little bit because that sounds like something GM could possibly detect custom tunes and literally rewrite the stock tune back to the car 
over the air. Now, he didn't get into the details, of course, so this is just speculation at this point, but if that's what that means, that's not good for us. At the same time, it could just mean that the possibility is there for that if you were having a problem. Let's hope that that's the case and they can't necessarily remotely detect a tune and etc. Just like I touched on in my previous video, the digital architecture is a great thing because it gives us access to, like I said, faster responding electronics. And now we have the ability for full HD PDRs, full HD backup cameras, and in this case, the full HD rear view mirror camera. With the car being so advanced, seeing a backup camera pop up on your screen in 480p resolution is just so 2019. With this being a brand new Corvette, it should come out with state-of-the-art electronics, something that you get in the car and you immediately know, yep, this is new. You touch something and the second you do, it opens and it's ready to go. It really just gives you a good feel. Now, the next thing that they touched on that was really a huge selling point for most people, I didn't personally care too much about it, but after seeing it, it's definitely useful, and that's going to be the cargo space. The car has the front trunk or frunk and the rear trunk too. So behind the engine bay in the rear, you are actually going to get another trunk that is big enough to house the target top, which is absolutely insane. The way that they mounted that top in the rear trunk area was mind blowing. Anybody who has a C7 Corvette knows the way it goes into the trunk is flat and it clips down into place. The way it does it on the C8 is actually the same thing. It goes in and it clips into its position, but it's at more of a vertical position to save space. That rear trunk area is big enough to house two golf bags. And why GM decides that they have to measure their cargo space in golf bag capacity, I'm not sure. But either way, I guess it gives you a good idea of how much cargo space this car is really going to have. The C7 Corvette, the C6 Corvette, they did a really good job at managing the cargo space. And you had a car that had the capability of having up to 755 horsepower while still having plenty of cargo space, which was an awesome thing. Like I said, I can definitely see why cargo space would be a big thing, but at the same time, I wasn't that concerned about it. After seeing it, I'm not that upset that we're going to have that extra space either. Another thing they talked about, which was something I had mentioned in previous videos, were some of the interior color choices and exterior color choices. GM is going to give us up to six different color themes on the interior and 12 different exterior colors. This is awesome. I've said it a hundred times on this channel. When we, as a consumer, get an option for things, we all win. So six different color themes on the interior. Odds are very good. Five of them will be ones that I dislike. A different five will be ones that you dislike. A different five for the third person's dislike. So this is exactly why when we get that option, everybody wins. You can have what you want. I can have what I want. And that's amazing. Right down to the color of the actual seat belts, you can customize the interior and it's amazing that we have that opportunity. The 12 different exterior colors is awesome as well because now again, you get the choice. What color do you want? And some of these colors are definitely different than what we've had in previous years on Corvettes. So GM's getting outside of their comfort area a little bit and giving the people more radical color choices, which is pretty good. It's definitely something a lot of people have been asking for. The whole C8 in general, when it came onto the stage, everybody was talking about the fact that the GM was listening. They were taking things we were saying and they were applying them to their next car. And it's obvious. We got a lot of different things here that weren't options for the C7 Corvette, specifically that front end lift. Tadge actually specifically addressed that saying that we listened to the Corvette owners and gave them what they wanted. Everybody with the C7 Corvette would have loved to have had a front end lift. And I'm sure that got back to him on more than one occasion. And because of that, the C8 has the front end lift. Now, of course, the C8 Stingray comes in two different variants. We have the base model Stingray and the Z51 Stingray, both of which will have that 6.2 liter 490 or 495 horsepower engine. And both of them in either configuration have a dry sump oil system. This is different because the base model C7 Corvette did not have a dry sump, whereas the Z51 model did with the C7 Stingray. With the C8, they both get the dry sump, and depending on which exhaust you opt for, you'll get 490 or 495 horsepower. 
Now, of course, the Z51 package will also give you things like bigger rotors in the front, bigger wheels in the front and rear, as well as some different aerodynamic options, such as spoilers, front splitters, etc. So very similar to the C7 Corvette with the base in Z51 packages, you get bigger tires, bigger wheels, better tires, a little bit more aerodynamic, and basically a more track-oriented car. They didn't say a whole lot about the actual suspension setup, but I would imagine that the Z51 package will also have a more track-tuned suspension available over the base model Stingray as well. So guys, this is it. This is the car we've all been waiting for, and it's here. After it arrived on the stage, what were your thoughts? Let me know what you think about this car. Will you be getting it? If so, what kind of build are you looking to get? Let me know in the comments down below. Z51 or base, what colors are you looking for? All that good stuff. I am definitely going to look into buying this car myself. Like I said, it will be sitting right beside my ZR1 in the garage. I will be keeping both cars because I still appreciate my manual transmission. And this car, of course, not going to have that option just yet. But at the same time, I would like to get into the C8 just to see what it has to offer over my ZR1. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. You're going to see a lot of videos in the future about this car, customizing it, building my own, as well as ultimately reviewing it. So if you liked what you saw, give me a big thumbs up. If you have any questions about this car at all, shoot them in the comments section down below or send me an email, horse.power.obsessed at gmail.com. I'd love to have a conversation with you about this. I'm looking to talk to anybody I can about this car. So definitely send me a message. Let me know what you think. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't yet, guys. Like I said, the coverage of this car is just beginning for this channel. And you are definitely tuned into the right channel for the best coverage possible for the C8 Corvette. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next upload.